so given this state of affairs of man moved by all kinds of forces of which he has no idea at all one wonders what is the issue is there really a issue or not and what is god doing in this world and why has he created all this and where from it all has come and all these questions which arise very naturally in any thinking feeling sensitive human being are raised by shurbindo through the lips of the queen so we'll just uh, read some of them and then page 440 the context is narad has just come and he has declared that satyavan is dwell among men yet he brings a strange fate that after in year he shall die and naturally the queen is disturbed savitri's mother wants him wants her to go back and choose someone else but savitri knows that whatever happens in life there is a deep purpose she has felt something true and beautiful when she has looked upon satyavan and she has known him to be her eternal mate and therefore she says i have chosen and if this be the fate then i am ready to face it and yet something within her knows that she can confront this fate and even conquer it so the queen is very disturbed quite naturally that why of all the people she has gone out she had to choose this woodcutter boy in the jungle why couldn't she choose someone else maybe in a lesser jewel but someone who could be little more you know at least a little longer life someone who could be having a good government job if not you know directly a prince woodcutter is also okay i don't mind but at least he should be able to live a long life to give my daughter happiness so she questions narad and these are questions because this is a issue which we face in life and she questions narad all walks inarmed by its own opposites as we have seen in 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 human nature all these forces have found their house error is the comrade of our mortal thought we are not given the power of foresight we are not given the power to truly know we judge balance reason out calculate analyze and we know how you know today we analyze one thing and tomorrow it turns out to be wrong the next moment we do not know what step we are going to take and what is the consequence of that step and therefore she says error is the comrade of a mortal thought and falsehood lurks in the deep bosom of truth you feel that this is true i feel truly but you don't know that what you call as true feeling is actually prompted by something false within so falsehood lurks in the deep bosom of truth sin poisons with its vivid flowers of joy or leaves a red scar burnt across the soul in the market of sin sin sells itself with nice flowers very attractive decorated flowers says come 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 look this is so nice and pleasant and man falls a trap to it so sin sells itself with vivid flowers of joy virtue is a gray bondage and a jail at every step is laid for us a snare the queen realizes this that at every step of a human march there is laid a snare alien to reason and the spirit's light our fount of action from a darkness wells in ignorance and nescience are our roots a growing register of calamities is the past account the future's book of fate 
that we are told that because of your past karmas do we really learn we keep repeating the same mistake again and again and that keeps on strengthening the inconscient roots because the inconscient mechanically repeats forever you can't change it they are fixed tables we heard about the fixed tables harsh economy of nature by which it governs this world so it has those fixed things inside those stamps on the race those stamps on nature every cell is stamped with inconscient trademark and underneath that stamp and seal somewhere there is a little signature of god but what we see is the stamp like today you know when you go to an office signature is not relevant stamp is relevant so you have the stamp trademark trademark in conscience ink company so everything is stamped like that that is where our roots are these centuries pile man's follies and man's crimes upon the countless crowd of nature's ills even saints there are saints who tell this world is like this you can do nothing about it look at it centuries millenniums has man ever changed and you hope to change man few lines below from old misdeeds or rather as if the world's stone load was not enough a crop of miseries obstinately is sown by his own hand in the furrows of the gods you say that you know this body this being god has ploughed this soil because a seed of divine is to spring up but what man sows in it weeds which will make sure that those seeds don't sprout so this is how a crop of misery is obstinately sown by his own hand in the furrows of the gods the vast increasing tragic harvest reaped from old misdeeds buried by oblivious time he walks by his own choice into hell's trap this mortal creature is his own worst foe so queen has read all the current philosophies that you know she knows all about the karmic theory that because he has done sins in the previous life therefore man is being punished he says but look at my daughter she still does not learn already for past misdeeds god knows why she has to face this but she is so adamant she still wants to go ahead what shall i speak of this fate on the next page <clears throat> she asked she asked all is an episode in a meaningless tale why is it all and wherefore are we here so she starts from existentialism and ends with mayavad why is it all and wherefore are we here if to some being of eternal bliss it is our spirit's destiny to return or some still impersonal height of endless calm since that we are and out of that we came whence rose this strange and sterile interlude lasting in vain through interminable time we dare not ask this question to swami ji who keep telling us that your soul is caught by the ego in the snare of time so i will liberate you do this particular mantra and your soul will be free of this snare ask him who created this snare some maya and who thrust this immortal soul into this maya don't ask too many questions you argue a lot these are spiritual truths you are not supposed to ask too many questions but the queen asks because she is human and not just a toy not just an unthinking creature at one place and shobindu says one of the reasons for india's decline is not lack of dharma lack of spirituality it is because we stopped thinking and one sign of this stopped thinking is to accept anything that comes on aastha channel every swami comes and tells us you are a sinner you are a sinner and we say yes we are a great sinner so he says come to me and i will set you free sir you are truly great how much you want 
give me just 1 lakh 15 lakh not for me for my ashram i am not telling something untrue i know of this is really a fact there are people who go in chartered planes well known figures let's not name it just a symbol of existence and for one hour talk telling people that you are a sinner and i am going to free you they charge 15 lakh rupees and then they add up saying this is not for me this for my ashram i dwell only in one of its small palaces so the queen but queen asks she says no no i am not going to let you go narad i have caught you today tell me why is it all and wherefore are we here who made this snare who put the soul into it who will to form or feign a universe in the cold and endless emptiness of space you say that this is illusion narad i have seen the other day when a little pin had hurt you you said ouch and you call it illusion and who feigned this universe if this is the fact who created this or who feigned it or if these beings must be and their brief lives what need had this soul of ignorance and tears only a perverse god could create just for the perverse experience of suffering that i know bliss let me experience suffering so she asks what need it had of ignorance and tears or all came helplessly without a cause you say that divine is all blissful all beautiful but i think he is helpless before maya miss maya is very dangerous she has snared brahman the lord so she must be really someone very powerful more powerful than brahman himself so he is saying or all came helplessly without a cause what power forced the immortal spirit to birth and a few lines below or who persuaded it to fall from bliss and forfeit its immortal privilege we were very nicely enjoying in the garden of eden in paradise and what is this some fellow comes and whispers even in that place something comes and is so powerful that the soul falls into eternal hell my god there must be some problem narad please solve this question for me so it raises all these issues <coughs> on next page she says i think queen says now i think i have my own philosophical understanding there is nothing like god and being and all that it just in impersonal force in impersonal power and impersonal is impersonal it has nothing to do with our pain sorrow suffering it is ever the same unchanging as shobindo would say passive impersonal reality so queen must show that i am not utterly ignorant so don't give me all that story i already know it so she says or if no being watches the works of time what hard impersonal necessity compels the vain toil of brief living things and she would say oh desire how did desire arise in the impersonal and create this world a great illusion then has built the stars so easy to arrive at the truth of mayavad just look at appearances and arrive at the truth but when we look at the depth what is the vision that we'll see but when we look at appearances of life only the appearances we are likely to arrive at mayavad maybe it's all an illusion because it makes no sense and no meaning but then the problem is then who created this tale told by an idiot meaningless tale with much sound and fury but no substance in it so this question comes so queen is asking a great illusion then has built the stars but where then is the soul security it's poised in their circling of unreal suns maybe there is no soul it says everything you are saying is illusion maybe brahman is also illusion because it's a logical conclusion if everything is an illusion who knows 
you say that there is something like an impersonal reality maybe even that is an illusion there is nothing like real so he says she says or else it is a wanderer from its home who strayed into a blind alley of time and chance and finds no issue from a meaningless world maybe by mistake the all knowing the all wise the omniscient the omnipotent made one mistake in his life by mistake he entered into this lane where it was written forbidden territory and like all forbidden territories it has a great attraction so he says by mistake he has come and entered the snare of time or where begins and ends illusions reign narad i know what you are going to say you are going to quote me the famous book by the famous saint and you will say don't think all these it's all an illusion sab maya hai so he says in that case you are an illusion your word is an illusion your experience is an illusion where begins and ends illusions reign perhaps the soul we feel is only a dream eternal self fiction sensed in trance so this is the issue less issue that the queen raises and we have seen what answer shirbinda would give us no it is he who hides behind the mask and it is he who is creating forms after forms for his habitation and it is he who keeps the soul on the path we have a very interesting aspiration in the brihadarane kupnishad asdo ma sadgamya tam soma jyotir gamya mrityor ma amritam gamya and its literal translation is from the non being to the true being from the darkness to light from death to immortality but it could be interpreted in just another way to the being who is in the non being who hides in the non being to the truth that hides in falsehood asado ma sadgamya that truth which hides between asad tamso ma jyotirgamya that light which hides within the cape or the mask of darkness mrityor ma amritam gamya that immortality which hides in a hood of mortality take me to that so the whole yoga changes its position till now the yoga has been run away from this sphere of anityam asukham lokam into that sphere where we hear only the music of griefless sons where there is no night where one knows not sorrow neither happiness nor sorrow stains that truth let's go there shivoham shivoham because that is the truth but this yoga that we are we know that let's create here that ananda that light that immortality that truth that bliss which is already there for that is the purpose for which we leaped into this inconscience and ignorance so it inverts the whole thing and who would do this task individual man can only offer himself to be worked upon because within him there is the meeting of these two opposites below man we have each species fixed to its type nothing like an individual soul but a soul of the species it is a reign of unconsciousness ignorance and there is a fixity of that scheme but in man there is the possibility of meeting the two to make a bridge and through man to pour something of that light that bliss that consciousness upon earth so this is the new yoga that shurbindra and the mother release for earth 
so that man can lend himself but it means to be willing not just to go through those realms of light and peace but to be willing to be worked into our darkest abysses because that light will not just it will not spare us that it will go into the darkness touch the very roots of horror and through us touch the universal inconscient and only she can do this work none else in fact before the mother comes to pondicherry she already had this experience in algeria she speaks about touching the universal inconscient while she was with theon and she goes there and sees the utter darkness of darkness and when she goes into the heart of that darkness she discovers who is sleeping there the same being with closed eyes whom she has already seen above and then she describes so beautifully that out of him iridescent light was coming out which was pressing in conscience to release a little bit of consciousness up it was at the root of creation and when she goes this great being opened his eyes and then she says from that time onwards he becomes conscious and consciously creates the world still then he is in his sleep and because that is its nature it creates it creates there is a perfection even in imperfection of this world there is an order even in the disorder and chaos of this world because that is its nature but it opens the eyes and the whole evolution takes a very conscious turn but for this evolutionary journey to be complete there is needed the intermediary man for that is the task of man that is the role of man so we'll read that passage savitri sees this transformed being the mask of death is gone page 679 what is the solution to the issue and what savitri does for us what the divine mother has done for us death is licked up by light and that formidable shape of night is transformed and what does savitri discover what is the secret of all this issue this question that queen has raised that what is all this creation so sh- of course narada answers but he is answering to the queen so he hides truth with truth that is how shubindu describes because he cannot give the full light the queen is not yet ready but much later when savitri rips off the mask of death what does she discover who hides in this darkness transfigured was the formidable shape page 679 the shape of death and in conscience his darkness and his sad destroying might abolishing forever and disclosing the mystery of his high and violent deeds a secret splendor rose revealed to sight where once the vast embodied void had stood night the dim mask had grown a wonderful face this what shubindu would bid us to trust and see that in every mask of night in every fall in every torture in every suffering there is something or someone who prepares us for a greater ecstasy night the dim mask had grown a wonderful face the vague infinity was slain whose gloom had outlined from the terrible unknown the obscure disastrous figure of a god fled was the error that arms the hands of grief what we call error are his steps upon the way 
that arms the hands of grief and lighted the ignorant gulf whose hollow deeps had given to nothingness a dreadful voice as when before the eye that wakes in sleep is open the somber binding of a book illumined letterings are seen which kept a golden blaze of thought inscribed within a marvelous form responded to her gaze this is a deepest liberating truth that shrobindo is revealing to us a truth which we need to remember is the most practical thing always to remember whenever we are confronted with the most terrible darkness that even in this he is seated within who sweetness justified life's blindest pain that is the end of the journey if this is the issue thrown by destiny's dice where man is a plaything and a chattel to time's lord the end is the sweetest sweetness that one can imagine whose sweetest sweetness justified whose sweetness justified life's blindest pain all nature's struggle was its easy prize in a sonnet termed krishna named krishna shrobindo speaks thus at last i know the meaning of soul's birth into this universe terrible and sweet at last i know the meaning of soul's birth into this universe terrible and sweet i who have felt the hungry heart of earth aspiring beyond heaven to krishna's feet nearer and nearer now the music draws all life is a strange felicity nature is a blind enamored pause hoping its lord to touch to clasp to be and then he says for this one moment lived the ages past but look at this little touch which changes everything we hear these kind of things from the saints for this one moment lived the ages past what to arrive at the feet of the all blissful at the vision of the all wonderful but in this journey shobindo is not taking only his soul denuded he says the world now throbs fulfilled in me at last he is carrying the hungry heart of earth so it's not just a liberation of soul into the divine and self annulment but a liberation of nature into the divine nature sadhar mein mukti its transformation into that of which it is at present the crooked and distorted shape that is the goal of the journey the world now throbs fulfilled in me at last all nature struggle was its easy prize the universe and its agony seemed worthwhile and then what does this form reveal with that we can maybe depending on the time stop for today savitri has seen through the mask so he says i know your plan just like ashupati has known the plan she says i know the plan and i want that moment now i know that you have created this world for bliss you are creating this form so that one day in this nature within the field of this nature there would be a free dance of the all wonderful i have i know that each form you are creating so that the all beautiful can gaze through every eye so why don't you do it now so again this god had revealed he tells savitri again he raises a question on page 689 
He says, Savitri, you have seen, you know the truth, but let it take its time. Don't rush through. Don't start this yoga so soon. Man will start doubting you. He will not believe you. He will not trust you. You think he is going to listen to you? So he says, page 689, If you can climb to an unperishing sun or live on the edges of the mystic moon, the heroes and the demigods are few. What you are asking, Savitri, only a heroic heart can dare. Only that heart can say, I abandon even Mukti and all this lure of otherworldly heaven and I am willing to walk into the abyss if need be with thee by my side. That is the only thing I want. See, such beings are very few. Even the seers have just few of these moments. A few lines below, he says, Heaven's call is rare, rarer the heart that heats. I have been asking men for this. You think I have not been calling them? For millenniums I have been calling. But rare is the heart that heats. The doors of light are sealed to common mind. And then he states the problem just as it is. And earth's needs nail to earth the human mass. Only in an uplifting hour of stress, men answer to the touch of greater things. Only when we have problems and pain, do we say, O Lord, which temple should I go? How much should I offer that my desire will be fulfilled? Or raised by some strong hand to breathe heaven air, they slide back to the mud from which they climbed. And then even while he is saying that, he does not condemn man. He says, in the mud of which they are made, whose law they know. They have grown and been nurtured by this mud in this school of inconscient. So that's their favorite place. Even if it is dark, they like it. It's their favorite home. They joy in safe return to a friendly base. So nice, all the time we don't have to sit near the Samadhi. We can come out and once again go back, switch on the TV, talk all the things which make us feel so nice and light, light talk. So he says, the joy in safe return to a friendly base. And though something in them weeps for glory lost and greatness murdered, they accept their fall. To be the common man they think the best. Common man has nothing to do with Aam Admi concept of communism. Common man is he who is satisfied with commonality. Who is satisfied with the average pitch. Who is satisfied with just being a plaything in the hands of time. Who is satisfied with the gross content and satisfaction of ordinary boons. Savitri is not, Nachiketa is not. That's what marks the uncommonness. To live as others live is their delight. To be the common man they think the best. That all this is fine, all this talk about yoga. But my parents, my friends, my relations, my in-laws, my everybody tells me all this is good. But there is a but. That but is more important than what comes after this. This is, okay, it's a nice thing. Very good. But don't follow it. It's a real story of a man who used to go every week for a satsang. And one day he was not able to go. And his son said, I will go in your place. When his friend came to visit him, he said, okay, uncle, I'll come with you. And the father gave him a slap said, get back. Who asked you to come here? We are grown up elderly people. Who asked you to come in our talk? So his friend asked him, why have you slapped him? He wants to come with me for the satsang, for, for the nice discourse. You and me go there every week. Why are you stopping him? He says, you don't know. 
we are mature people we will listen we are not we know what is to be left out this fellow who knows he may suddenly take his ticket and straight away go to pondicherry or you know he will say i want to stay there this fellow no 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 don't send him let him grow let him get married have children have a settled business then he can go he can do what he feels like after i am dead and gone anyways who will stop him so i have been entrenched in my bonds let him also be fully a bonded laborer then i will set him free so so this is the human average is the level pitch a thinking animals material range this is one problem the second problem is in the long ever mounting hierarchy in this stark economy of cosmic life each creature to its appointed task and place is bound by his nature's form his spirit's force you are trying to bring a greater light the frame is not ready and his spirit is not meant to climb beyond a certain level at the most man has been given to reach the impersonal or have some experience of some personal divine at most i have allowed him to sit in an aircraft which time to time i will send and his soul can enter into it and i will allow him to escape but don't ask his spirit to call down that greater force into this frame made of mud it will shatter him and if suddenly everybody become gods you know what gods do already this is very dangerous if this were easily disturbed it would break the subtle balance of created things the perpetual order of the universe would tremble and a gap yawn in woven fate fate is woven this is how in greek mythologies we have in other mythologies also the goddess of fate is holding a thread and is weaving constantly by the cosmic forces the fate of everything so suddenly you know you have few beings who are on earth if they are out of earth she has a hold over earthly beings now suddenly a few beings on earth who are free from this fate she cannot weave their fate and yet they are on earth now this is going to be very dangerous because they will upset everything they can start creating fate they will start changing things they will gradually make everything escape from the hands of fate and one day this nice sweater which i am you know weaving they will unspun the whole thread and reweave it this is what they will do and in fact shobinder says this is what they will do authors of earth high change to you it is given to dread the dangerous to tread the dangerous spaces of the soul to you it is given the authors of earth high change and this is what mother said that such children are going to come and don't think they are going to be very nice children very saintly children they are going to question you challenge everything because they are called down to change destiny they are called down to change fate and so she is being warned you know what you are trying to do all the parents are going to come running and complain to me that you called who called this new world all my children they have stopped obeying me they don't listen to us they say i will do what i feel like please don't do this all my parent all the parents of earth will come and request me that what have you done they be will become so different so he says it will break it will create a gap in woven fate if men were not and all were brilliant gods they will say whom shall we listen now we can tell them you know parents are like god pita devo bhava matra devo bhava acharya devo bhava so previous generation they said yes you are like god to us now when children will become like gods what will they do they will say father you better behave like a god pita devo bhava they will reverse the meaning matra devo bhava mother you better behave like a god is this how gods are acharya devo bhava oh teacher you say that you are a god you better behave like a god gods are not partial so these children are going to challenge us and question us so what they will do if men were not and all were brilliant gods the mediating stair would then be lost there will be total disconnection people call it generation gap 
suddenly there is a jump time mediating stare is gone how the children are so different from us we don't understand here is the mediating stare and he has been she has been warned by which the spirit awake in matter winds accepting the circuits of the middle way we used to be so nice we always thought of career first god later these children want idealism first career is the last thing on their mind so what kind of things you are going to do you better list you know so after a few lines below he says my will my call is there in men and things but the inconscient lies at the world's gray back and draws to its breast of night and death and sleep imprisoned in its dark and dumb abyss a little consciousness it lets escape in one millennium this much evolution so much so that it doesn't even appear that anything has changed unless you see 500 years it doesn't appear that things have changed it this much it allows but jealous of the growing light holds back close to the obscure edges of its cave as if a fond ignorant mother kept her child tied to her apron strings of nescience shubhendra knows everything how we can be too protective tied to the apron strings of nescience child go so far but not beyond that not so far the inconscient could not read without man's mind the mystery of the world its sleep has made inconscience had created man by which it can understand itself and yet man is its key to unlock a conscious door but still it holds him dangled in its grasp so man is a key to unlock a conscious door i think we have um, we can close with this uh, man is the key to unlock a conscious door we meet on first and second march for one hour because uh, saturday is a early dinner so we'll have both days one one session and we'll read some beautiful things 5 to 6 and we'll read some beautiful things uh, about the new creation because this is the boon she brings and it's a supramental year so the boon that savitri gets from this godhead who is whom she discovers behind the mask of death so it'll be the logical culmination